It's Tuesday, April 22nd, 2014. This is the show with no name. I'm Bob Going with Gavin Murdoch. Jim DeCosher is around someplace, but, you know, he gets talking uh, after, the, after the other show's over. He wants to, wants to find out what's going on, so he'll be wandering in. Those of you watching on camera will see him walk through the door any second now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gavin, uh, you... Uh, a nice trip to Kentucky, did you? Absolutely fabulous trip. I bet you it was nice weather this time of year? The weather was adequate. It, it was a little cool one day. We had a couple of days of uh, semi-sunshine. Uh, I did have a chance to run with the horses, and unfortunately I beat them at the track, so my money did not <laughs> get returned to me. Uh, that old gray mare ain't what she used to be. Wow. And she's All still right. running, but we had a, had, had a great time. Uh, on the way back, you know, you absolutely know when you leave New York State, you, when you come back, you're back in New York State. Oh, how is that? How is that? Well, first of all, you got tolls. There's right, no right, tolls anyplace right, else. So right, we knew we were in New York right. State. And number two, we saw what our toll money was not being used for, was the, the <laughs> repair of the, uh, the potholes that we encountered uh, once we got back in New York State. But that being said, you do know, of course, that New York State is an above-average state. Above average in what way? Well, they just announced that the average uh, cost of gasoline is three sixty-eight a gallon. We are above average because we're seventy-four. Oh, so wow, we should be cool. proud we're from New York State. Yeah. And uh, and uh, bus business uh, uh, discouragement. Well, uh, I, I I saw uh, uh, a lot of moving trucks going out of the state. Yeah. I didn't see any when we came back in. Yeah. But uh, we're Kentucky number one. We're number one in uh, in business uh, discouragement. We are. Yeah. Well. Yeah, that was uh, that, uh, that came up while you were away. You uh, might have missed it. Kentucky might be pretty close to being the other end of the spectrum is that because right? they they are putting up all sorts of uh, buildings for for companies for manufacturing. They're doing all sorts of uh, uh, housing down there. Wow. It's it's a, a booming state, or at least around Lexington, where where we were. It so so did you growing. feel like you were you, you were in America? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then yeah. we're back in New York State. Then I feel like we're, yeah, we're, we're not in America. A, you know. But we had, we, had, we had a great time. I listened to the show uh, when I got back. Uh, you guys look good on camera. Well, oh, really? You guys look well, good on camera. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. So, but it was, uh, it was well, a Phillips, good show. Philip saved the show. He, yeah. He, he surprisingly called us uh, from Florida, as you know. Uh, you could have called us from Kentucky, I guess. I could have, yes. I can't remember what I was doing between 10 and 11, though, on Tuesday. Uh, I tried to when I was in San Diego a few years ago. I tried to call the show uh, from uh, from the hotel in San Diego. The, the connection was terrible. So yeah, it didn't work out. But, yeah, hate missing the show. You know. Oh, I can understand it's that. Tough. I, I I had the, the shakes too till I had a chance to get back and watch it. Yeah. You know, it was a good pre-Easter show. By the way, uh, it's Tuesday, so we uh, should wish a happy two 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 Tuesday to our friends at uh, Emmy Lou's. Uh, That's right. Uh, you know, where, where Tuesday is always a great place to be. Actually, any day. Yeah. 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 Great breakfast over there. Uh, Jennifer ducked out last week. I noticed uh, uh, she was posting pictures from the beach on, on Facebook. So, uh, yeah, on so. a Tuesday? I think she was gone all week. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, it seems to be. Anyway, you know, those kids are out of school. They all Everybody wants to run away. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Get out and about and see what the rest of the world's doing. Uh, our yeah. Laura was not at Disney World. So she, yeah. she, she got back Saturday. No, Did she have a good time? Oh, well, she always has. She has a good time wherever she is. Yeah. She's a happy uh, kid. Happy then, is good. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, little Bob is in uh, Franklin, uh, Massachusetts, which is my mother's hometown, also where he went the first two years of college at uh, Dean College. And they have them come back uh, once or twice a year to uh, light some shows that they do. Uh -huh. there. They'd like to have the professionals. And all the, you know, that's where he got his start. And it's an inspiration for the younger kids. You know. uh, so uh, he got to see uh, Louisa over the weekend, who's in Boston, uh, Boston area. And uh, on Friday, he went to the ball game with, with my brother. Who did they see play, Bob? I believe they were playing the Baltimore Orioles on Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so they lost that game. Then uh, Saturday and Sunday, uh, none, none of the family was there. Monday, uh, yesterday, Louisa went uh, with her boyfriend. They were celebrating the fifth year of their first date, fifth year anniversary of their first date. Uh, nice, 
beautiful, beautiful day in the ballpark, a terrific game. They left before the end of the game when it was, you know, the Red Sox were making one of these spectacular comebacks that, that, that they usually do, you know. They're, they're down 6 nothing after two innings and, uh, uh, and then come back and, you know, they've got, uh, the, actually they had chances to win it, I think, in the seventh, eighth, and ninth innings. And uh, ultimately they lost, uh, you know, with the bases loaded uh, Oops. in the ninth inning, bottom of the ninth, but uh, down by a run. But, Couldn't uh, you know, those things happen, you know. Long season, uh, but uh, but they weren't there for the end of the game, and I think if they had missed the end of the game and it had come the other way, they might have been uh, so because they they wanted to, you know, she had a friend running in the Boston Marathon, and so they wanted to, she was keeping track of his time and uh, wanted to get out there and make sure she snapped a picture of him in Kenmore Square, I think, as she took that one. And uh, American won the uh, Boston Marathon. Well, American of sorts, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's it counts. Yes, yes. It counts. Right. He, he right. counts, but he was from, you know, born in Ethiopia like everybody else had crossed the finish line. Yeah, and the, the oh, woman set boy, the... Those guys are fast. And the woman set the uh, record. Set the, the record. Yeah. 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 And there was a lot of people watching. And a lot of people watching. She said the security was really, really tight. Uh, the, uh, all, all the side streets and alleys were closed. You had to go through, I think, a metal detector to get... Even on the uh, even on the route, and I, I mean, you know, the, the race runs through Kenmore Square, literally, you know, a block away from Fenway Park, right. or a long block, but uh, two blocks, call it. Uh, uh, so when the when the game gets out, all the crowd moves in that direction. It's impossible, uh, and and now with. Uh, with all the roadways blocked, it was uh, yeah. super impossible. I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know how they emptied the ballpark. Tell you the truth. Maybe they didn't. Well, I don't know. I guess you could. Uh, they probably had access to the uh, to the T at uh, at the Fenway stop, but uh, getting to Kenmore Square. Oh my God. We we went three years ago, uh, and Mary had just had surgery on her ankle, and she was in a wheelchair, and. Uh, did she run in the wheelchair race? Uh, she did not. No, we were at the ball game. We, uh-huh. you know, we, we had seats for the ball game the day before, and then we picked up uh, some on StubHub for the Monday Patriots Day game since we were in town anyway. Uh, and we couldn't use our seats. We, we kind of traded them for standing room, and then they put us in the wheelchair section. Uh-huh. Uh, so we, we actually had you know good view of the game. But uh, getting back... Our car is on the other side of the <laughs> of the race. <laughs> Oops. Oops, that wasn't. We, good par- we parked our car at a Boston University lot. I think we paid for it, I, uh, but it was the one closest to where Louisa worked at BU. Louisa was at BU at the time, uh, and we really couldn't figure out how to get back across. And uh, ultimately, we realized that the only way to do it without you know, going 26 miles out of your way, uh, was uh, uh, was to take the elevator at Kenmore Square down to the subway, and then and then go under the road and come up the other subway entrance. Uh, well, this took a long while to negotiate because the ball ball game getting out, the line for the elevator is like three hours long. But whatever, it took a, took a long time. But we eventually get on the elevator. We go down. We cross over to the other side. There's no elevator on the other side. And we got Mary in the wheelchair. <laughs> they do have an escalator. And, of course, there's, I'm sure there are all kinds of signs saying do not use wheelchairs on escalator or something like that. So uh, Diego and I grabbed uh, each grabbed an end of the – and we went right up the escalator with a wheelchair. And, and, away, and away we went. So it worked out. worked out. An invigorating day, however. Uh, uh, Jim. What are you up to? Nothing, nothing. Yeah? How many did you have over for each? Or, or we dinner? only had 20. We only had 20. Had oh. 10 people couldn't Did you have the big it. table out or no? Uh, two of the tables were out. Okay. You know, you know, Elaine, uh, Elaine did a fabulous dinner again. Yeah. Homemade Enjoy. bread? You know, I didn't have any homemade bread, but I had homemade Easter bread. I made the 20, 23, 24 loaves of Easter bread. <laughs> well, isn't any bread you eat on Easter Easter bread? No, we didn't have it at, at dinner. We had regular bread at dinner, whoever wanted it. But so these are the sweet? Uh, sweet breads, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 
So you didn't you didn't fire up the uh... didn't fire up the the oven outdoors because was when I started it was rainy and drizzly so I didn't want to go outdoors and I got a little bit lazy it was so much easier. Well, maybe this year's project should be to uh, build a hut over it. Uh, I got a hut over it. <laughs> oh, well, I still, I still, yeah, still you're wet to, to get to the to hut. I oh. still yeah. have to walk to it. Uh, oh, well, okay, so. <laughs> Oh, the covered a, walkway. A yeah. Covered walk. Well, that would be good. that would be an ideal. Any of the neighbors complain about the smoke or anything? No, no, no not yet. No, There's not no yet. Not yet. No, uh, I, no explosive situations down no, there. The first time I fired it up, though, uh, a couple guys were walking by, running by, and they they run down Guy Park Avenue for their exercise. Yeah. They ran in the backyard because the smoke they, they was thought on, the house was on fire. They yeah. thought the place was on fire. I said, well. So I finally I call the fire department. I said, look, I said, if you get people complaining there's smoke here, this is what it is. And that's the day Jim's house burned down. <laughs> uh, and, no one, and no one showed up. But it was a great day. Jesus, oh. oh. I see uh, your name was in the paper this week, Mr. Going. Was it? Yeah, what it was. What, what for? Some committee or something that may or may not be formed. Well, it's formed, but... Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 the, uh, the, yeah. uh, the, uh, the council appointed, uh, appointed me as chairman of a committee to review the city charter. Now, who can form this committee? Is well, there are lots of ways to do that, and uh, there are formal ways and informal ways. This was more of an informal uh -huh. way that they, that they use. Uh, but they, we have a formal job, even though it's an informal committee? Well... Uh, look, if you want to do it pursuant to the municipal home rule law, uh, uh, then you and and actually give powers to the committee, uh -huh. uh, then then you have to do it by local law. If you're the common council, if you're the mayor, you can just appoint it under the municipal home rule. Law. Uh -huh. The mayor has the power; just to, doesn't have to consult the council. Just appoint it. Uh, Does the council have to? Uh she said she was going to do that, didn't she? Well, she said she. People are urging her to do that. Uh, I don't know. Well, she said that she wasn't happy with the people on the, the, uh, the. Well, interestingly, the, 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 she uh, she's demanding resumes apparently of. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 wow. Let's see. That's interesting. Well, let's uh, let's talk about the people I know on the committee. Okay. Uh, let's see. First of all, there's me. You have a resume. I, I suppose I got one someplace. Uh, you've, you've served on a couple of these commissions in the I, past. This would be the third uh, city charter commission I will have served on. I served on three county charter commissions. So you have some experience in this area. I, yeah, I was corporation counsel and, of course, uh, 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 you know, looking over two charter commissions, okay. including one I was sitting on uh, when I was corporation counsel. So that's a good start. Is that a good start or a bad start? Well, I don't know. I, I mean... If you're just looking for a resume, I guess I've got one. Okay. Uh, let's All see right. who else is on this. Uh, and, and by the way, my interest in city government and how it's run goes back to 1962 uh, or 1963 when my father ran for alderman, uh, and so I, I became very, very much involved in how. In how old was I then? Uh, uh, Eleven. Sixty-three. Uh, yeah, I was twelve. 12. Uh, well, no, I yeah, I turned twelve. Yeah, during the campaign. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I was uh, in I don't know, sixth grade, I guess. Yeah, sixth, seventh grade by the fall of '63. I guess okay. I was uh, getting up there, almost in junior high. Yeah, yeah. almost had yeah, to shave. Junior high by the time the primary was held. Yeah. Okay, so who else is uh, uh, on your committee? Uh, let's see. Well, there's uh, Mario Villa. Uh, I don't know whether he's got any possible. Uh, qualifications to serve on a city charter commission. He was 12 years as mayor of the city. Uh, uh, I think he served a couple of terms as alderman, as alderman. Uh, before okay, that. Okay, so he has, he has uh, some. Plus he served on the board of supervisors where he had also had to deal with uh, municipal law. Okay. All right, so that's was he a supervisor? Sure he was. Oh, sure. Really? Yes, absolutely. Wow. After he left the mayor, he was, uh, he was on the county board of supervisors for a while. All right, so that's a good start. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Marie Gavery, uh, uh, three times ran for alderman, once elected. Uh, she served with you or not? You were, or she was on the term you were off? She was on the term I was off. Yeah, well, you know, Marie obviously uh, took an active interest in uh, uh, city government. In fact, okay. she, she uh, I think, was on the council that appointed a previous uh, charter commission uh, okay. back in 2004. So she has uh, interest in uh, experience. Okay. 
That's uh, good. Yes, and 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 uh, she's a Democrat. Uh, uh, she was. Uh, she was elected as a Democrat, served as a Democrat, and, you know, no. yeah. No, All right, so, I, but uh, I'm sure she'll have to submit her resume to the mayor before the mayor makes her decision on whether to veto the resolution. Uh, uh, Jerry Scracky uh, uh, shows up at the Common Council meetings, uh, uh, r runs a photo blog, and uh, which he comments on uh, uh, local issues, clearly has... A civic-minded individual. A civic-minded individual with a vast knowledge of the law. He looks things up when uh, when there's a question. Yes. Uh, I you know I often turn to him to uh, I, t I take the lazy way out. I I know that somewhere there's a law that says something, so I said, Jerry, what's the law on this? And he finds it for me. I look it up, and he's always right. Uh, uh, okay. And and and, uh, and he was appointed. Uh, I mean, Mayor Thane should have his resume in, in her file because. Uh, she appointed him to the, uh, the zoning law review commission. Okay. I think among other things. Uh, so interest in a little bit of experience. Okay, yeah. that's good. Uh, is, I can't is, think of who else is, is on. Bobby DiCaprio on the on the. I, I forget who who the other members Bob are. Bob uh, mm -mm. Robert Bob yeah. Pertell. No, yeah, he's I not thought, on it, is he? I thought. I thought I, thought I, I saw be, his I name. I could be wrong, but I thought both of them were on the review committee. Well, whatever. So anyway, so uh, so yeah. that uh, with with all. But you can't understand why, why, why. What's the hurry? Well, here's the hurry. If you want to do this right, you appoint the committee now, so you don't hurry. Okay. The hurry is you appoint the committee early, so they have lots of time to review these things and discuss them and debate them before having to put it on the ballot. I mean, you've only got until basically the first of September. Uh, to to well, put this mm -hmm. on the ballot, well, she says there's nothing to review, nothing to review on the on the charter. Maybe know. maybe she's right. Maybe we'll get in there and decide nothing. there's nothing. There, there is nothing to review. However, there might be. Yeah. I mean, maybe if she hadn't brought up some salient points in her recent lawsuit against the city of Amsterdam. Uh, uh, we might all agree that maybe there, there's nothing to discuss. But among other things, there's one that bothers me. <laughs> if, if I'm sounding like Columbo, it's because I got Netflix and I've been watching all the old <laughs> Columbos. <laughs> it's, just, it's just one thing bothering me. One thing I, I don't understand. Maybe you can explain this to me. <laughs> just one more thing. One more thing. One more thing. I just don't understand this. You know, you know my wife. Uh, <laughs> uh, among other things, she asserted through her attorneys that the ordinance creating the golf commission, which governs the golf course, was improperly adopted 35 years ago. Okay. Uh, that the local law, uh, which amended the charter, which permitted uh, the, the, the golf course ordinance, was not properly put before the voters, or should have been put before the voters and was not, okay? Uh, that is a pretty odd position to be taking. I think we've mentioned that during the, during the course of the lawsuit. Now, the, in other words, all the people I appointed to my commission are illegal and they have no authority whatsoever. Uh, that's a strange position for a mayor to be taking. But that's the position she took. And uh, apparently it's a debatable point or it wouldn't have been debated. Now, it, it ended up not being part of the lawsuit because uh, the Common Council agreed to withdraw their amendment to the ordinance, mm -hmm. and so that whole issue uh, be became a moot uh, and, was, and w w would never have been reached anyway in the course of, uh, course of that lawsuit. But, so it hasn't been resolved in court, uh, but the issue was raised, which means the issue could be raised again. And so it seems to me that, among other things, it's uh, rather imperative that that old local law uh, be now submitted to the voters. Uh, or, uh, you know, so otherwise, if you revert to the basic 79 charter, 
Uh, it says nothing about the golf course whatsoever. And we've talked about this before. The, the reason it says nothing about the golf course is they were using the Gloversville City Charter uh, as, as the model. basis, as a model for, uh, for the 79 Amsterdam Charter, and Gloversville didn't have a golf, golf course. Right. So there was nothing in there about it. And therefore, according to the 79 Charter, the Recreation Commission is in charge of the golf course. Now, in reality, that never happened. Because there was a golf commission before the 79 Charter, the golf commission continued in, uh, in full force, if not effect, uh, uh, after the charter was adopted. And really, only when my charter commission brought the issue up did, the, did they really start discussing this, well, maybe if we want to do this right, we, we'll validate the commission that's there, which is what they did. They, they ended up uh, uh, basically uh, passing a local law which recognized the status quo, mm -hmm. right? In other words, yes, we have a golf commission. Here it is. They didn't even they didn't even bother saying who appoints a golf commission because they had they you know they already had a golf commission. They weren't going to argue about it. They just uh, go ahead and reaffirm everybody's appointment, and and, and that was it. Uh, uh, and so, uh, as the mayor has the general power uh, under the charter to. Uh, make appointments where it doesn't say otherwise. The, the, mayor, the mayor since then has made all appointments to the Golf Commission. But it doesn't have to be that way because, mm -hmm. the, because the Common Council, according to the local law they pass, which permits them to pass a golf ordinance, the ordinance can say whatever they want. The ordinance can say, uh, you know, the uh, the police chief is in charge of the golf course with sole authority. It could do that, if it, and they have the power to change the ordinance. Uh, so they could, they could. What they attempted to do uh, before they withdrew it for this lawsuit and to make peace, uh, they attempted to pass an ordinance which, uh, which I think gave the common council the authority to make the appointments, which they can do, if the local no, law no. passed 20, 35 years ago stands. Stands. Uh, so that's a big hole in the charter that n probably no one would have thought of if uh, they hadn't raised it in the lawsuit. Uh, so, you know, I think that needs to be addressed. There are other things that need to be addressed. Uh, the uh, Corporation Council has asserted uh, that certain things that uh, were passed by the people are, are, are not valid, including... Uh, uh, including the uh, limitation on taxation, uh, the, 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 uh, that you can't raise the taxes more than 3% a year. Uh, of course, the state now says 2%, but their criteria are different, so there are places where they do overlap, because we also include it in there. Well, that was passed by referendum. Uh, yeah, I know, I know, but he's asserting that, uh, uh, that, that, that the portion uh, of the, that allows it to be overridden only by a vote of the people is illegal. Uh, okay, that, that you can't have uh, a people referendum. can't decide. Right, they can decide to put the put their limitation oh, yeah. in, but they can't, can't decide, decide. To, uh, to override it. Uh, but uh, but the common council could do it by local law if they wanted to. That's his assertion, and uh, you know uh, that can be clarified. The. Uh, uh, the people have the right to pass a local law that says no changes in the charter can be made without our approval, as long as it's in the charter. They can put it in the charter. Uh, my assertion has always been that that's effectively what was done in that case, but, that, uh, but as it's not written in that language, it, it allows a wiggle worm, which allows lawsuits, which allow you know, and, and you if, want it to be clear and concise. You want to be clear. You want to be clear on the issue. That no, the people pass this. No, you don't have the right to, uh, to do that without going back to the people. You want to have a special uh, referendum on raising the taxes? Go ahead. But, you know, that's... Uh, so, that's what, uh, you know, those are some of the things I think need to be addressed. And they need to be addressed coolly, calmly, deliberately, which means you start the commission now 
and work until the 1st of September. So you have some time, some to, time to fully think about explain it, and, and examine. And, and, right. And let other people come in and say why you shouldn't do things that way. And there are, you know, uh, I personally think that there are areas of the charter that don't give the mayor enough authority. Uh, and um, I, would be, I would be in favor of uh, giving the mayor uh, more power over, uh, uh, over appointments than, uh, than she has now. Uh, because it doesn't matter who the mayor is. The question is... Uh, uh, the it, position. It, it, the position. And, and uh, should the mayor or a non-elected uh, uh, department head have authority? And I, my opinion is the final word on all these things should be an elected official, whether it's the, the common council as a, as a body, whether it's the mayor, whether it's the, uh, uh, the city controller. Uh, there should never be a question of uh, runaway bureaucrats. All right? Just because you're appointed head of a department doesn't give you absolute authority over an elected official. Uh, you may have tenure, you know, you may not be able to get rid of you, but if that's the case, then you shouldn't be in a position where, uh, where elected officials have no oversight over what you do. Because there's no checks and balance on that's that right. system. That's right. Kind of like the IRS. Now, when does this come up? Not often. You know, it's not often that it comes up as a real issue. That, uh, but you know what? It, it shouldn't come up at all. That's my feeling. Whether I could get anybody else on a committee to agree with me, whether the Common Council would agree with me if they're the ones who ultimately have to pass mm -hmm. the local laws to put it on the ballot, I don't know. So, so we'll see what happens. I, we'll I, see who, who her appointments are when, it, she, when it, she appoints a, a committee. Well, I, th I think, first of all, I, I think it's highly likely she's going to veto this resolution. The fact that she's waiting the full 15 days uh, tells me that she's going to veto it. Uh, Otherwise, she would have just signed it and be done with it and appoint her own commission. Which I she probably will do. I thought she signed it. She did not. She did not. No, not the last I heard. Well, there's a meeting tonight, isn't there? Is there a council mm -hmm. meeting? Yes, there is. Well, I don't know. First? Yeah. No, we're the, this is the 22nd. There's not a regular meeting. That, that would have been there. Would have been that was the, yeah, that was the meeting I was appointed, I guess. But I thought there was one they were going to be discussing... Uh, Specific parts of the budget something. tonight. Oh yeah, they're good. Uh, yeah, I mean they're gonna. Uh, we're in budget season, so they're uh, yeah. they're doing that. Matter of fact, we, you know there was we had some back and forth uh, trying to set up a date for the charter uh, committee to meet, uh, and and of course we're trying to do it around the times that they're working on the on the budget, so we can have the common council chamber and so the aldermen can attend if they want to attend, etc. Or the mayor. Well, she submitted the budget, so now it's up to the aldermen down and tweak it yeah which is what they're starting to do they're starting I guess. to do yeah i guess aren't you going to those meetings no i haven't been going to any meetings jeez jim no, you know no. you're our liaison to yeah, show no name to the councilman the, yeah. Yeah. the council i hear what's going on through the the back door oh, oh okay uh, all right yeah my sources aren't as good as they used to be you know she fired too many of my sources <laughs> Is that uh, they were fired because they were your sources, or uh, probably? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's some she never knew about, though. Uh, I still got I've I've still got some secret cells up there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good to have. I should name people I don't like so that they, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> What's he thinking? What's he doing? What's he, is, he, is he trying to use psychology? <laughs> anyway. It's Netflix. I'm, I'm really enjoying this. I'm catching up on stuff that I... Yeah. The other night we started watching Cheers from the beginning. You know, I, I have a recollection of Cheers being a funny show, all right? But that was a long time ago. I think it, it premiered like in 82 or something like that, which is getting to be a long time ago now. Yeah, it is. Let me tell you, from the first episode... The writing, the acting, the directing, the, 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 the bits, the physical bits they're doing, outstanding. I was laughing out loud harder than I've laughed in a long time. <laughs> uh, and it was, uh, uh, I don't know, wife and I, we just sat down and we, we, we watched. Uh, oh, you had some fantastic <laughs> characters in that uh, show. Uh, from the, and, you know, uh, one of the things I found amazing was John Ratzenberger 
was not listed as a regular cast member the whole first season. He's in every episode. He's he's doing Cliff at, at his Cliff best. But George Went, Rhea Perlman, everybody else is listed a, a, on the cast. And the, at the end, he's just one of those extras they throw in. And you know, John Rodzenberger is Cliff. See, and I, I think I don't think he missed an episode in the, the entire time the show was on. I think why that resonates for you and some more of us from here in Amsterdam is the fact that we had. A number of establishments were that were just like that, oh, yeah. and these are real people to us because you can imagine sitting up at Burr's Highland House yeah. and having these people sitting there at the bar yeah. with these same things going on. Oh, absolutely! You can identify who they are in Amsterdam who filled those roles, right? right. You know, and, and the uh, and the weird conversations that come absolutely, up absolutely. I, I remember one night at the Corner Tavern. Uh, uh, I was there with Petrusha, and uh, we're, uh, 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 we're discussing some kind, of, some aspect of local politics. And this, uh, I would, how should I call it? I guess I'll call him a drunk. This drunk at the end of the bar, I said, uh, uh, can, I, can I ask you guys a question? <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly, sir. You know, we always, you know, want to hear from the from the public. <laughs> Do you guys consider yourselves uh, Hamiltonians or Jeffersonians? <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, so the guy knew his history anyway. Yes, and so we got into a long discussion about the relative merits of Hamiltonians and Jeffersonians. Uh, it's just, just amazing. Just amazing stuff. Yeah, yeah. But that's why I think that really resonates with people from Amsterdam, that program, because we had all these neighborhood bars, right. and you had the authority who sat down at the end of the bar right. who, who knew, knew everything. everything about everything, right. you know. And, and you had a, a bartender that could play back and forth to all these constituents he had in the, the place on any given night to, to keep it lively. And, and interesting, and, and he did. I mean, Stan Burza, you know, he could go from a conversation about local politics to a conversation about the, the Brooklyn Dodgers, right. you know, without missing a beat and carry on two conversations at one time. Yep, yep. Uh -huh. And I think that's why it, it's, you know, immediately when that show came on, he said, ah, yeah. You know, you can relate to what what was in there. But it was done just right. I mean, exactly. it was uh, the 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 writing, at least in the first couple of seasons, which is what we've been watching, is absolutely fantastic. And I would think that these writers had spent a lot of time in these bars to be able to do I, that. I have to, <laughs> have to, because they absorb the character. You know, and, uh, Norm, who never goes home. That's right. right. right? You know, That's he's got right. a wife. You know, uh, you know, Shelley Long says to him, uh, 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 doesn't your doesn't your wife uh, ever miss you, Norm? You're never home. He, he turns to her and says, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and the conversation can be so literate. There was one episode where they were uh, talking about going to watch Gladiator movie. There was a, like a Gladiator uh, trilogy uh, uh, at one of the local theaters that they were going to... And they're, they're doing their uh, Roman centurion salutes, and as they're walking out the door, the door and Norm says, De gustibus non est disputandum, <laughs> which, which means you can't argue about taste, which, which, is, <laughs> which he says in Latin about a Roman gladiator movie. You know, this, this is amazing. This is amazing. De gustibus non est disputandum. <laughs> Probably weren't six of us in the audience. It's a got it. Oh, oh my God. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, and even the ones playing the dumb guy, you know, Sam and the and the coach, uh, they're 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 playing dumb, but they they're pretty bright. They're pretty bright. They're pretty bright, and they had some fantastic, fantastic banter. Anyway, so that and the Columbos, uh, uh, amazing how how long ago that was. Yeah. I mean, that was they, they started in, in the 70s. '71. Yeah. Yeah. And and actually, there was a. Uh, they don't have it on Netflix, but there was a an early Columbo in '68, which was a little bit different. Uh, it was done as a made-for-TV movie. Uh -huh. They shelved it. Uh, they they showed it, but then uh, three years later, they come back and started making the semi-series huh. out of it. Because you remember they were alternating with McMillan and wife and uh, 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 Mc, uh, uh, Dennis Weaver. Uh, uh, yeah, Mc what? Not, not MacGyver. That not MacGyver. No, that no. was somebody else. Dennis Weaver was. Uh, 
Mick, 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 Mick. Come on, somebody in the audience, call up and tell uh, us. Dave will tell us. Anyway. Uh, help us out. Help us out. We're stuck. McLeod. 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 <laughs> right on. Yeah. Right? Uh, so anyways, uh, the bit characters that you see in there. I've been watching the Alfred Hitchcocks, too, you know. By the way, this is WCSS 1490 in Amsterdam, New York. We're watching the show with no name. With, with or Amber. listening to it. Or, or listening, listening to it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I forgot. We're not on TV today. <laughs> Yeah, we will be later, though. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyways, I'm watching the, uh, the Hitchcocks, the, the old Hitchcocks. The same character actors are showing up in all, and, and the, the Twilight Zones. You see the same guys. John Williams must have made uh, a dozen Alfred Hitchcocks. Uh, and he's the guy who, uh, he's not the guy who does the music for Star Wars. This is John Williams, a British actor who played the detective in Dial M for Murder. Uh, you may remember him there. But most importantly, we remember him uh, from Sunday afternoon when he did those infomercials for the uh, 7,000 most beautiful uh, pieces of classical music ever written. Yeah. It is all oh, the great classics. Yeah. Uh, and, and I probably saw John Williams more in that than I did in all the TV shows and movies he was ever in because that commercial ran for years. We have... Uh, <clears throat> The, the, the house where I work, one of our gentlemen uh, is a big Western supporter. And, you know, we see all the old Westerns. You know, see Bonanza. Right. You see the, the Virginian. You know, the High Chaparral. You know, Little House on the Prairie even. And you see the same characters Over. portrayed by the same character actors in all of these. I mean, there was... Uh, Hollywood was supporting lots of guys who were not headliners that played these particular types of western roles yeah. in all, all the programs and you, you didn't notice them as much then but when you go back and you uh, right. start watching it he was just in and right. he was just and he was just yeah. in last week too. Right. Well, that's right and i'm, so I'm watching these uh, the cross uh, crossing yeah. The series yeah they're they're all in there over and over and over uh hitchcock was great in, in almost every episode had a former star, Hollywood star, right? Yeah. Or, or big name, or somebody you would recognize from the old days, and some and, and up rising. and comer. Uh, there, there was one quite good episode with uh, Claude Rains playing uh, 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 ventriloquist, and the detective, uh, the Columbo type character, uh, interviewing him is Charles Bronson. Right? Uh, when nobody knew who Bronson was, it was like 1957. Wow. Uh, and, and so you got the classic character actor with the up-and-coming yeah, character yeah. actor, uh, man. And, and the aging uh, Hollywood uh, starlets, uh, Ida Lupinos, and all these shows, uh, over, over and over. Uh, just uh, fabulous. I saw one uh, at the Columbo yesterday with, uh, there's a short scene where they're playing basketball in a gym someplace good place to play basketball all right good place to play basketball i mean it's not outdoors it's not a stadium yeah. it's and uh and colombo just uh, you know you know you know who are these guys these uh, uh, this is a pickup game so this is not a game these guys come into practice they live in the neighborhood these guys are all uh these guys are all pros they just happen to live here and they're 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 down here working out Pat Riley was, was one of them. He starts going around, the, who, who, who's there? Yeah. Pat Riley was one of them. Yeah. For half a second. It half was, a it, he was on less in that episode than I was in the way we were, but, <laughs> but he got his name mentioned. <laughs> this is WCSS. You're on the air. Hey there, sluggish. Okay. Uh, slugger. Yeah, well, we already got McLeod. What else you got? What else you got for me? Well, McLeod, what I, one, the main reason I call her, one of the two. Uh, my son is doing, he's about halfway through with last report. An episode by episode history of of Colombo. That's cast credit, yeah. plot line, right. uh, quote unquote analysis, etc. He really got hooked on a couple of years ago. I guess also was it Netflix? Uh, yeah, well that's it. That's why I've been watching yeah, it on Netflix. I've got the whole. Got pro and it. you know what the other amazing thing about this is that you can now see them far clearer than they were when we watched them on the old TVs. Because now, oh, now I'm watching, nice the I'm watching it on my HD TV, and it, everything is crisp, and it's like it was made yesterday. And it's, uh, you know, yeah, it's, I never got into the series. I like Falk. 
but I never really got into that circuit because it was too, they were too, uh, shall we say, parallel. Uh, formulaic. Yeah. Yeah, there's a good, okay, I'll go with that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, although he had some sparkling, who was it? Gene Berry was the first. One. Oh, there was, uh, yeah, you had Gene, well, the first, um, the, the first of the series was actually uh, uh, Cassidy. Uh, Jack was Cassidy. Who? Jack Cassidy. Was it really? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. was thinking Barry was the first. Uh, oh. He was the second, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, when you were talking, you just mentioned clarity. Have you caught what TCM's doing this week? Uh, no, I pulled the plug on the cable. What are they doing so this week, So you can't Dave? get TCM at all? No, no I can't, no. No, it's, a, it's my one regret, but it's not worth another 70 bucks a month. No, yeah. not that much. Well, i got three channels. So what, are they, so what are they doing? They started at 8 o'clock last night, and they're going 24-7 through 10-15 Saturday morning. Uh, 55 John Wayne films. Wow. They've never done anything like that for any performer before. Wow. And, of course, they had to start with The Big Trail. Of course. Now, that's the fourth or fifth time I've seen it over the years. That's a good movie. Uh, that's a hell that, of a movie. That was 20 years ahead of its time, at least. Oh, yeah. Easy. Uh, and, because the John, was, Wayne, John Wayne was nobody. That's the only John Wayne movie that ever lost money. <laughs> and since that was his what they call a breakout role. Yeah. He had done three or four little tiny bits before that. Uh, they blamed him. Yeah. So he his penance was, what, nine years? Nine more years of, uh, of B-movies, right. Yeah. Now, uh, for those who don't know, The Big Trail was done in widescreen in 1930. Yeah, uh, which is which is incredible. Uh, William uh, Fox, because uh, uh, widescreen didn't come around to the fifties. This was seventy millimeter. Yeah, right. uh, 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 they but all, it was uh, his first starring, and role. it was yeah. the last for Tyrone Power Senior. Wow, and it's the only movie that Senior made that had sound. So it was the only chance you had to hear his voice. What a voice! Wow. But he died of, like thir the next year, yeah. maybe 32. Uh, but but the sweep of that with the, the running horses. The oh, it horses, was fantastic. And, oh. Uh, unbelievable and for 1930. they have restored it. So they got rid of the snow except where it was supposed to be toward the end. Yeah. The blizzard. Um, and it was just as sharp and clear like they made it week before last. Wow. But uh, he he was a little uh, awkward. It was his for and he supported the whole and it was a cost two million dollars for that time. Uh, uh, which is incredible. Lord. Yeah. Well that's why I lost money because they they spent all that well, money on this. Yeah, twenty five uh, twenty five cents a ticket theaters, they did make a lot of money. Yeah. The theaters had just changed had just invested in sound equipment. Yeah, and they weren't going to invest in new cameras. Yeah. Well, and this was an even sharper sound system, and that's yeah. what broke the back. Oh. Uh, and but the the filming that seven, and the, they filmed it both ways, thirty five and seventy millimeter. Really. And the seventy millimeter, they had fourteen cameramen. Well, there you go. Yeah. Oh. And and and, and, they, and of course they, Raul they, Walsh they, they is credited did. with discovering Wayne for that movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he did it with one eye because well, he yeah. just what a year before had lost his right eye when he was playing the Cisco Kid in one of those movies. Yeah. Uh, and Fox lost his right eye too. Part as one of the wagon drivers, and but oh, and and it's it's a good story. Hal G. Everett was a great Western writer for years, and it was his story, his original story. I don't know if he had much to do with the screen, uh, screenplay. But. Hey, speaking of original stories, the first Columbo, <coughs> the, the very first Columbo, this story and screenplay were by Stephen Boschko, who, who was the, who was their, really? who was, who was involved in most of the first season. 
Uh, Boschko, of course, went on to do uh, uh, Hill Street Blues, Blues L.A. Law, yeah. and all those other shows. Uh, well, wasn't he married to Barbara Babcock? Uh, married to Barbara Babcock, uh, yes, okay. yes. Uh, well, it was a good way to get her working. Yeah. yeah only Let her pay half the bills. That's right. Uh, and it was directed in 1971 by young upstart Steven Spielberg. I was going to say Spielberg. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, I know you've seen Duel. Uh, you know, ben I never Spielberg. have. I've never seen Duel. Oh, ho, ho. you better correct that ASAP. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, that's four years before Jaws. So. Yeah. Um, and and the, the Duel, I mean, you see one old lady who runs a little uh, uh, tourist trap one stop along the road. You never see the driver of the other truck, of the truck. Uh, and that was directed by Spielberg, and it was meant for television. And Universal thought it was so good, they put it in theaters. There you go. And and it was also, in theaters, it was almost 20 minutes longer than they planned uh, than for television. Well, but, I think oh, that what was... a movie. That, I haven't stayed, nobody's run that one in a while. I've, I've never seen it. I've, I've never had an opportunity to see it. Oh, you got to catch that one. That one, Weaver is... He was a much better actor than people gave him credit for. I mean, even uh, Orson Welles was impressed with him. I there mean, you and go. that took some doing. But anyway, between Columbo and what they're doing, and John Wayne, they're doing, well, today they're doing all the mid-30s. You know, the... The, the schlock. Well, they call them bees. I'm not sure they rated that high. <laughs> they, they filmed them three to four days tops. Right, right. And Wayne said he got so confused he couldn't remember which which, which movie he was day in. they were shooting yeah. what title. <laughs> right. But they just kept going, right. you know. Right. And they had a whole cupboard full of directors, and that's all those people did was these B flicks. You know, you could probably take the footage from all of them, uh, make another uh, another ten movies, and uh, mix the stuff up, and nobody'd know the difference. <laughs> you could probably. It, it might be worth trying. Well, in fact, the one that just finished was the fourth, no, it was the last of eight films they made with Wayne in the 30s that were remakes of Ken Maynard's silent movies. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, they... Which would be well, movies in the, th in the 20s. <laughs> with absolute abandon. Nobody worried about it. Because uh. nobody cared about the plot lines. It's, and the billing is John Wayne and Duke, which was his white horse. Oh, and of course, Rand, Rand, is it Randy rides alone? I think that's on this afternoon. <laughs> that's the one where he sings. You might do well to avoid <laughs> that one. At least with your sound down, anyways. Uh, well, yeah, 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 or a mute. Yeah, uh, mute buttons know. come in awful handy sometimes. I don't know. I've heard anyway, you, uh, you stay warm. We're getting uh, rained on this afternoon, right? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't look forward to that. Why not? Uh, because, hey, you don't have to shovel it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you forgot that part, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, thought you might. Yeah. Anyway, June 5th, Shuttleworth Park. Opening day. All right, we'll be there. All righty. All right. Take, take care. care, guys. Bye-bye. There you go. I guess I won't be writing that Colombo book now. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad idea, though. It's, uh, especially when you got all the credits uh, laid out for you. But, uh, uh, they're not bad, you know. They're, they 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 all have a look to them, you know. They're, uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're all the same but different. Uh, yeah, but but he he's just so good. Yeah, they, they they do the same bits over and over. I I you know I left your phone number. I hope they have, you don't matter. <laughs> every episode, every the phone rings and it's for him. <laughs> of course, nobody had cell phones back then, right? yeah. and, and nor did, nor did the police have any of the technology that they have in today's uh, today's shows. So, uh, you know, yeah. you, you mentioned mentioned that my uh, over vacation, my uh, my son had a uh, had to do two old regents exams in biology. He's taking advanced biology in eighth grade, and I said, you know what, give it. To, I'll, I'll take it, Bob. How'd you do? Uh, I, about five questions in, I said, that's it. It is DNA. 
it's oh, oh the stuff, that, stuff that didn't exist. The we stuff exactly. Right, yeah, right, absolutely. Right, 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 I was right, I was right. looking for our questions. There was not one of our questions right. on the test. No, you probably wouldn't be able to do the history. Very you got an eighty-five on. I said, "Holy cow!" It's just I couldn't. I absolutely. I, I was confident going in that I was going to do okay on it. You know, I thought it might be fun to take the SATs over or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. ask anything new on it. I try. Yeah. It. Yeah. Anyway, this is WCSS. You're on the air. Yes, Bob. I was listening to your conversation here with uh, recycled actors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a good way to put it. Okay. Dragnet, Adam 12, an emergency. Talk about recyclable. <laughs> well, yeah, it was all Jack Webb. They were all Jack yeah. Webb shows. They were, exactly. They were basically they the were same show without Jack Webb. You know, the other yeah, I mean, it's, I think that's the only suit that Jack Webb ever wore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could be. Uh, over many years. Uh, he wore the same suit in Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> well, you yeah. know, uh, Columbo, Columbo's uh, raincoat. raincoat. Was the one that he wore in Murder Incorporated in 1960. Uh, so, uh, so he was he was so fond of that that he kept it uh, through everything. <laughs> but seriously, it, it really was his his own coat. And it never rained in California where he was working. No, no, he no, 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 But he always had the raincoat on. <laughs> yeah, no. I, my wife and I were sitting there watching. I said, "Well, look at this guy." He says he was he was a drug addict last week. Now he's a doctor. Right, right, <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and though, you know, as we were saying, those character actors just uh, flipped in and out. Of, and not even character actors, just... Uh, Characters. Myrna Loy was yeah. in an, a Columbo episode. I, didn't, you know, she, I don't know how old she was. She hadn't, she hadn't made a, been billed in a movie in about 20 years, I think, when she appears in Columbo. Well, there's this one woman that's on Dragnet. She, uh, one week she's a reporter. Next week she's a foreign... foreign uh, <laughs> Foreign, foreign, uh, which we call it, for, fortune teller. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then, then next week after that, she uh, <laughs> did, did a scam, the scam with the, with the pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> and then next, the, the, the next episode, she's a. Uh, Oh, Christ, she owns a jewelry store or first store or whatever. <laughs> right, right. I, just, right. I just told my wife, I said, look at this one. I says, then you got a guy, he's a lieutenant one week, next week he's a sergeant, next yeah, week, yeah. Next week he's, a, he's a drug addict. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the, you know she was somebody's girlfriend, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. her medical medical examiner, district attorney. I said, boy, oh, boy, he just run on the characters. <laughs> yeah, I just thought that was kind of interesting. Well, well I guess that, I, you know, particularly in the 50s when they were doing all these anthologies, uh, where you had a whole new whole new cast every week, uh, there there was a lot of work for these guys. You know, oh, there, yeah, there were, may not have been a lot of stations, but there was uh, a lot of shows that. Uh, and, and the shows ran thirty two episodes every year. Two of them. Thirty nine episodes. Thirty nine. There were thirty nine episodes. Yeah. yeah. Well, right, the Rifleman is another one. Oh, recycled right. actors. Yeah, all of those. Yeah, one 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 day the guy's a general, and the next week he's a hermit. And, yeah. You know. <laughs> Gabby Hayes. Uh-huh. And Gabby, Gabby Hayes. Gabby Hayes. He was in everything. Yeah. Yeah, and I forgot what that other actor was. He, yeah. he always played like a hillbilly. And oh, I always played Gabby Hayes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I just thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. I, just, I got a call about the recycled actors. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank yeah. you. Okay, bye. Thank you. It's true. It's true. You know, and a lot of these programs are half-hour jobs. Right. So they, crank, they were cranking them yeah. hard and fast. You know, and and every week they were, uh, and you see, so you had even more shows because they're all half hour shows, so you you know, network is running. You know, you know what I think it, you can sense, is particularly watching the '50s ones, you can sense the influence of radio because the the writers for radio had to crank out these yeah these series every day. You know, so they were used to working hard and fast and yeah. uh, and uh, pushing this stuff out yeah. the door. Uh, and it worked. But uh, you, uh, another thing you see is the same plot lines. Uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday, it, Pernell Roberts was on uh, Gunsmoke as an, <laughs> as an Indian. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Oh, my God. Yeah, all these guys. Uh, all these characters. And then they had to stretch out the third lines because then he went to the hour westerns like Bonanza, you yeah, know. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the first ten minutes are great, and the last ten minutes in the middle is just in the middle. It's just, like, middle, it's just fill, it, fill that space between that's, commercials. That's right. Yeah, I, that's right. Uh, I, I don't think Bonanza holds up well at all, and and that could be the reason because it's too long. 
It's just plain too long. It, it, it was long, and you know, the, the sets, they only had like three sets they used. Right, right. You know, in, inside the house, outside by the corral, and then one yeah. for the town. Oh, that's, a, that, just, that's another thing about watching all these things in a row. You, you, you see the same, uh, uh, the same oh, furniture. Same, the, 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 same street. The, 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 the same basements. The same, uh, you know. the, the street, one time they show west to east, next time they show it east right, to west. Right, right. You know, right. it's just... Uh, they're, it's almost like they're bumping into each other from another uh, program sometimes. Uh, absolutely. Because uh, uh, they're yeah. all using them. And, uh, you know, the Columbos were all filmed on that Universal Studios a lot, uh, which if you, I don't know if you've ever done the tour in California. No. It, 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 that's worth the money, let me tell you. That's, uh, uh, the one in Florida is way, way more commercial. The, the, the real studio tour in California is, is great. Mm-hmm. I remember actually. I remember seeing Columbus car parked along the road. So they, they, they don't mention it. They don't mention it on the tour. It's just uh, just uh, you know, parked a couple of blocks from the Psycho House. You know, it's a, uh, <laughs> but you you recognize these sets, and you and you certainly recognize the view over. I think it's a San Fernando Valley uh, uh, that, that yeah. Universal had, and and all these show the the uh, oh, the rich people's houses are all the same house, uh, even if it's in London. You know, it's the same house. You know. Overlooking the San Fernando Valley in London, you know. you know, and that view that they show, sometimes you had no idea why are they showing this. You know, just take up time because it, it had no exact, relevance to the story or exactly anything else. Exactly right. You can see where they're dragging it out. Yeah, and they're just putting the footage in to make up the seconds. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see. We're gonna do a uh, podcast Friday. Uh, well, well, yeah, we'll see. I. I plan on it. I think we will. All right. You know, you're we'll do it outdoors this time, probably. Maybe. I don't know. It's supposed to rain Friday. Three percent chance of rain. Yeah, it's a soccer tournament. That's why there's going to it's going to rain. Yeah. What? What? We got a minute and a half. We can talk. That was a fast hour, Bob. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Real fast. Well, yeah. We, we get going. Yeah. We get going. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed uh, this episode of the show with no name. We uh, do this every Tuesday from uh, bring 10 back o- ten o two to ten o two 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 Tuesday. Yeah. Bring bring back memories of days gone by and days, gone days, by. Of, days of yore. Days of yore, the olden days. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> twice a good show. We remember that. Wow. Okay, I'm Bob Going with Gavin Murdoch and Jim Nakosha. And we'll be back next week with more scintillating conversation on the show with no name.